everybody it's Lisa here welcome back to my channel today I'm going to be sharing with you my autumn slim line card that I created for my mum's 70th birthday today I'm using Sunny Studios woodsy autumn stamp set and to start off I stamped off the images with my stamping tool and memento tuxedo black ink Today I'm going to be colouring with my Copic markers and the colours will be listed above the screen for the actual colour combos that I do use per image. Now normally when I'm colouring my images with my Copic markers I usually tend to colour lightest to darkest and sometimes depending how the image is coming along I may actually go back over the colours again. But I'm actually finding with creating videos on YouTube that doing that type of style is actually taking a lot more time to process in the video, therefore creating a longer watch time, which isn't really good for you because I know that your time is precious and I want to be able to create shorter time span videos. So therefore, in this video, I'm tending to color from the darkest to the lightest color. Uh, well actually that's what I'm going to be doing from now on to keep those videos shorter. There's a little bit of a story behind my Copic colouring for this card but just to give you a little bit of background of the process I use I normally pre-plan the projects I'm going to create for the upcoming month the reason being is so that I can actually purchase new supplies but only the supplies that I need to create those projects that way it saves me money because I'm not randomly spending my money on items that I just love rather than need to be able to create those cards. It sort of works for me and also it helps me pre-plan my the YouTube videos that I'm going to be creating for you too. So back to the story, what I wanted to do was create two cards. One card was going to be a Father's Day card and the other one was going to be a birthday card for my mum. I wanted to use exactly the same stamp set for both cards and so I decided that I was going to do some batch colouring. Basically colour the images for the, the Father's Day card and then colour the images from the same stamp set for my mum's birthday card. Now I'd never actually done any batch colouring before in, in this sort of way, um, especially for my YouTube videos, but I thought it might save me time and that way I'll just be focused on on one thing at a time and that process really worked for me however after I colored the images I decided that I was going to create the background card panel for the Father's Day card and I totally enjoyed creating the background of this card but when I finished and I put the Father's Day images that I was going to use from this stamp set onto the actual um, background panel they didn't quite go together it didn't it didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to but then when I actually changed the images to the birthday images from the same stamp set that I was going to use for my mum's birthday card it seemed to go perfectly well together. So not only did it change my thought process in regards to the original card I was going to create for my mum but it also changed the thought process in regards to which video was coming next on my YouTube channel. So basically the images that I'm colouring now on this video was actually supposed to be for, which was good, it was supposed to be for my mum's birthday card but the actual background panel was going to be for the Father's Day card but now I'm combining both of them together to create my mum's birthday card. So have you, as a paper crafter, have you ever found that that's happened to you where you've actually created elements to create a specific themed card but then change direction halfway through? Let me know in the comments.
Back to the card at hand, I actually found the hedgehogs really easy to colour. There wasn't a problem. Well, colouring wasn't a problem. I love colouring. However, with the mushroom or the mushroom house, I had to take a little bit more care and a little bit more time to colour because of the fact of the little white dots that is on top of the mushroom. Now I just love the images of these trees. I think they're gorgeous and they were so much fun to colour in. They are, as you can see, three trees. However, I'm just going to be showing you how I coloured one today in different stages. Um, but also I will show you the other two that are completed as well. Two of the trees are coloured in the same green colour for the leaves, but the other tree is uh, coloured differently just to give it that autumn feel. I wanted to give the impression of autumn and I wanted to colour the leaves accordingly. Now it took a little bit more extra time colouring in the way that I did um, and also I used a lot more Copic colours than I originally thought I would um, but I just love the end result. I think they turned out really well. So rather than focusing on just colouring the leaves in one or maybe two different colours, I decided to use three different Copic colours for the leaves. So I focused on colouring one leaf at a time and I was using like a little dabbing motion rather than a full stroke just because it was such a small area and I wanted to ensure that I could get those colours going from the darkest to the lightest to get that autumn color effect. So the copy colors I used for the green leaves was G29, YG67 and YG63. And for the ready orangey type leaves, I use R35, YR04 and Y17. So I was just happy dabbing away, listening to some music, adding one colour at a time. And then I came to colouring the little scarf around the little hedgehogs. So adorable. To start with, I was using G29 and I was just creating the shadows. Then I went in with YG67 and YG63 and just blended that out. Here comes the other tree and um, this one I wanted to create more of a pinky color because I was going to do the hedgehog scarf the same color as well and the colors I used were R59, R85 and R81 and like I mentioned I also decided to color the scarf exactly the same colors so that I had to repeat of the same color to give the cut more unity with the same colors from the hedgehog and the tree. Once all the images were coloured, I then used the Sunny Studio Stamps coordinating dies and just run those through my die cutting machine. So now it came time to create the slimline card base and the actual panel. And so I used MFT Berrylicious cardstock for the card base and I trimmed that down to nine by seven inches and scored it at three and a half inches. Now for the card base, I used Bristol Smooth card and trimmed that to three by eight inches. So I wanted to create an ink blended background so that it would have like a, like the sky and also the grass. So for the sky I used so, uh, Salty Ocean Distress Ink and for the grass I used the Evergreen Burrow Distress Inks and I just basically blended those together. To create more interest of the background I just um, sprayed a little bit of water onto the background and then just picked up the excess water with a paper towel and that way it just gave a little bit more interest to the actual background. Now 
wanted to create a frame around the ink blended background um, and I had the MFT stitched rectangle sculpt edged frames, uh, frame dies, um, but the frame dies were just too small and I needed them to be longer. So what I had to do was do some partial die cutting, which I had never done before, but I needed to make the these frames a bit bigger so that it would surround the circumference of my ink blended background. But I decided to give it a go. Um, and I must tell you that I reckon that there must be an easier way of doing it because I did struggle. But basically what I did was I lined up the... Um, frame die and just with a pencil just scored the lines um, to figure out the length that I would need to cut it and where I could position the actual uh, die cut frame. It, like I said it was a struggle for me it took me about half an hour to do I won't lie but I did end up creating the frame itself so I was quite happy about that. I adhered the frame to the background and I'm really glad I persisted through the struggle that I had because I really do think that the um, partial die cutting frame actually made such a huge difference to the background of the card. To create more interest to the background of the card, so what I did was I grabbed some scrap paper and basically masked my background in, reg in regards to the colours that I was using and I got the distress inks and, and just smooshed them onto my craft mat and diluted them with a little bit of water and grabbed a small paintbrush and I tapped my paintbrush to create little splatters across the background. I really think that just splattering a little bit of ink onto your background really does create a different effect and just has a little bit more interest to your card and the great thing is it's just so easy to do. For my sentiment I used the Lawn Fawn Year 2 stamp set. I just wanted to create the sentiment of happy birthday. So I grabbed some MFT Berry Alicious cardstock and decided that I wanted to emboss my sentiment. So I grabbed some of the Ranger white embossing powder and then just heat emboss that. So I applied some adhesive to the back of the um, background and just adhered it to the slimline card base. Now it comes to putting everything together. So here I am just positioning the images to, um, on the background and also to make the sentiment strip pop that I had um, cut with my uh, paper trimmer. Um, I just used some of the Salty Ocean Distress inks and applied it around the edges with my ink blending tool. To make sure that the um, trees were standing flat against the um, card frame, I just used my scissors and trimmed off the um, excess of the tree trunk so that they wouldn't be rounded, so that they would be straight and would align properly with the, um, the card frame. And then I hid the trees and all of the other elements to the card. Now I did find some foam tabs in my stash that have been sitting there for years. Um, one side of them were actually sticky, but the other side wasn't. So for the side that wasn't, I um, just used some liquid glue and I adhered those to the card panel. And I did the same with the sentiment tabs and just adhered those to the background. I wanted them to pop up a little bit from the background just to give the cards a little bit more dimension. I wanted to give the cards a little bit more sparkle and or should I say I wanted to add a bit of sparkle to the card so I used my clear Wink of Stella glitter marker pen and just um, dabbed some of that, that clear glitter around the leaves of the trees and also the scarves of the little hedgehogs. And not forgetting the little uh, window of the little mushroom house and I also added some to the top of the mushroom itself. Thank you. 
somehow it came time to adhering all the little other elements to the card so I use the little grippy tweezer tools I'm not too sure what they're called um, but they actually open up when you squeeze the arms of the tweezers down now it did take me a while to get used to them but they're a handy tool to have so I decided to add a few highlights to my images and I use the Uniball Signo white pen to create those little highlights and just to add those little um, final details to the elements of my card I think it makes a big difference it, it just adds that tiny final touch to the rest of your card now I think as I've mentioned in some of my other previous videos I have tried many white pens before absolutely heaps of them and to, for me none of them actually worked they would um, either not leave a good impression on the image itself or or they just would work one time and then give up working another time it's like the pen dried out and I tried so many different techniques and different and adhere to so many tips from other people on YouTube in regards to trying to get the white pens to work again but they just never did but eventually I found the Uniball Signo white pen and they, it's just a beautiful pen to use. So now I'm just creating some details on the scarves, a few dots and a few little stripes. Just adds a little bit more detail to the image itself. I grabbed my Nouveau Crystal Drops and the colour I'm using is Simply White and I don't know whether it's me or whether I've got a dud bottle of this stuff or not or bad batch but um, no matter how much I try I always tend to leave peaks on the top of my little drops. I do also like slap the card on my hand to get rid of those peaks but I, I just finding that the um the liquid is just really thick so I don't know maybe I should try warming it up have you got any tips do you have the same problem let me know in the comments hey so as you can see I I added quite a few drops on the card and just to create that little bit more dimension so here's the finished card. I hope you like it. It was really, really fun to make. I also hope my mum likes it for her birthday card. So as always, I'll have links below in the video subscription box to all the supplies I've used and also the link to my blog post if you're interested. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And don't forget, I would love to know whether you've had a change of direction when you've been creating a card before. Also, if you're new here, please subscribe to my little community. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be alerted of new videos that come onto my channel. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate you stopping by. And here are some other videos that you may be interested in. See you next time. Bye.